So my estranged brother demanded I plan his lavish wedding for free after years of silence. Now, my family is pressuring Maine to give in. I, 31F, had been running a successful wedding planning business for the past five years. My journey into this field wasn't straightforward. After high school, I initially pursued a degree in biology, thinking I'd become a researcher. However, during my second year of college, I helped plan my cousin's wedding and discovered my true passion. I switched my major to hospitality management and never looked back. Starting my business wasn't easy. I worked for another wedding planning company for three years after graduation, learning the ins and outs of the industry. I saved every penny I could, often working overtime and taking on side gigs to build up my capital. When I finally launched my own company, it was just me working out of my tiny apartment. The first year was tough, with long hours and tight budgets, but gradually, word of mouth spread, and my client base grew. Now, my company is well known in our area. We've expanded from just me to a team of six full-time employees and a network of trusted vendors. We've even started offering destination wedding services. It's been a lot of hard work, but I'm proud of what of what I've built. Most of my family has been supportive of my business, and my parents, though initially skeptical of my career change, have become my biggest cheerleaders. They often recommend my services to their friends and colleagues. My extended family also comes to me when they need help planning weddings or other big events. I'm usually happy to assist them, often at a discounted rate. The only person who has never sought my help is my younger brother, Alex, 28M. Our relationship has a complicated history. Growing up, we were close despite our three-year age gap. We shared a love for outdoor activities and spent many weekends hiking and camping with our parents. Alex was always the more outgoing one, making friends easily, while I was more reserved. But we balanced each other out well. Things changed when Alex started high school. He began hanging out with a new crowd, kids who were into partying and pushing boundaries. I was in college by then and noticed the shift in his behavior when I'd come home for visits. He started staying out late, arguing with our parents, and his grades slipped. I tried talking to him, but he brushed me off, saying I was being overprotective. Despite this, we still maintained a relatively good relationship. We'd catch up during holidays and family events, and Alex would often seek my advice on school and relationships. I thought we'd weathered the storm of his rebellious phase. However, our relationship became seriously strained about seven years ago. It all started when Alex brought his girlfriend at the time, Sarah, 27F, to our family's annual summer barbecue. They had been dating for about six months, and it was the first time we were all meeting her. The barbecue was a big deal in our family. It was a tradition started by our grandparents and had been going on for over 40 years. Every summer, our entire extended family would gather at our parents' house. There would be games, music, and of course, lots of food. It was always a joyous occasion, filled with laughter and catching up. That year, I was excited to meet Sarah. Alex had been talking about her for months, and I was happy he seemed to have found someone special. When they arrived, Sarah seemed nice enough. She was pretty, with long blonde hair and a bright smile. She brought a homemade potato salad, which scored her points with our food-loving family. As the day went on, I noticed that Sarah was being overly friendly with our cousin Mike, 30M. The Mike had always been the cool cousin, the one everyone wanted to hang out with. Um... He was charming and good-looking, and I saw Sarah laughing at all his jokes and touching his arm more often than seemed necessary. At one point, I saw them sneaking off together behind the garage. It was an old building that my dad used for storage, and it was a bit secluded from the main party area. I didn't want to jump to conclusions, but it seemed suspicious. They were gone for about 15 minutes, and when they came back, Sarah's hair was slightly disheveled. I was torn about what to do. I didn't want to cause drama at the family barbecue but I also couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. I decided to wait until the party was over to talk to Alex. Later that evening, after most of the guests had left, I pulled Alex aside. Then we went for a walk around the neighborhood, something we used to do often when we needed to talk. I told him what I had seen, Sarah's behavior with Mike, them sneaking off together. They get their sneaking off together. Alex seemed upset, but didn't say much at the time. He just nodded and said he'd talk to Sarah about it, and I thought that was the end of it. I figured Alex would sort things out with Sarah, and life would go on. So but a few days later, I received an angry call from Alex. He accused me of trying to sabotage his relationship. So he said that Sarah had told him I was jealous of their relationship and was making up stories to break them up. I was shocked and hurt by his accusations. I tried to explain that I was only looking out for him, that I had no reason to lie or try to break them up. But Alex wouldn't listen. He yelled at me, saying I had always been jealous of his social life and that I couldn't stand to see him happy. Then they hung up on me. After that incident, Alex started distancing himself from me. He stopped returning my calls and would barely acknowledge me at family gatherings. At Thanksgiving that year, he and Sarah sat at the opposite end of the table from me and left early. Christmas was even worse. Alex skipped the family dinner entirely, saying he and Sarah had other plans. I tried multiple times to reach out and mend our relationship. I sent texts, emails, even handwritten letters explaining my side of the story and expressing how much I missed our relationship. So but Alex always brushed me off or made excuses. He'd say he was too busy with work or had other commitments. 
E, this went on for months, then years. Our parents tried to intervene, but Alex would shut down any conversation about me. But it got to the point where they stopped mentioning me to him just to keep the peace. So eventually I stopped trying and focused on building my business. It hurt, but I had to move on with my life. About two years ago, I found out through our mother that Alex and Sarah had broken up. Apparently, Sarah had been cheating on Alex with multiple guys throughout their relationship. Emma Sam didn't have all the details, but she said Alex was devastated. I thought this might be an opportunity to reconnect with Alex, to be there for him during a tough time. I reached out again, offering support or just a listening ear, but Alex still kept his distance. So he replied to my message with a simple thanks, but I'm fine. Fast forward to last month. I was surprised to receive a call from Alex out of the blue. Ak. My heart raced as I answered, hoping this might be the moment we finally reconnected. He told me he was engaged to his new girlfriend, Emma, 29F, and they were planning their wedding for next summer. I was happy for him and thought maybe this was his way of olive branch. However, my hopes were quickly dashed when he said he needed my help planning the wedding. There was no apology for the years of silence, no acknowledgement of our strained relationship. He jumped straight into talking about wedding plans as if nothing had happened between us. I asked him why he suddenly wanted my help after years of not speaking to me. He brushed off my question and said he just wanted the best for his wedding. And since I was in the business, it made sense to ask me. I felt heard and used, but I decided to be professional and hear him out. Alex explained that he wanted an elaborate wedding with about 300 guests. He described his vision for the venue, decorations, and catering. He wanted a destination wedding in Hawaii, with a beachfront ceremony and a reception at a luxury resort. He talked about having a live band, gourmet catering, and even fireworks at the end of the night. I listened carefully and took notes, all the while feeling a mix of emotions, hurt that he was treating me like a service provider rather than his sister, but also a glimmer of hope that this might be a chance to rebuild our relationship. When he finished outlining his dream wedding, I gave him a rough estimate of the cost, which came to around $75,000. Oh, this was actually a discounted price, considering the scale of the event he wanted and the fact that it was a destination wedding. Um, bow, bio. I had factored in a family discount, even though he hadn't asked for one. Alex balked at the price and said he was expecting me to do it for free or at a significant lower cost since I was his sister. I was taken aback by his assumption. I explained that while I do offer discounts to family members, I couldn't possibly do such a large event for free or at an extremely low cost. Um, that it would involve a lot of time, resources, and coordination with various vendors. I would essentially be losing money on the job. He became angry and accused me of being selfish and greedy. He said that after all the years of not speaking, the least I could do was plan his wedding for free as a way of making amends. I reminded him that he was the one who had cut me off and refused to speak to me all these years. I told him I was willing to offer a family discount, but I couldn't work for free. Alex then started guilt-tripping me, saying that our parents would be disappointed in me for not helping my own brother with his wedding. He even threatened to tell the whole family that I was refusing to help him unless I agreed to do it for free. His words brought back memories of how he had turned the family against me years ago with Sarah and I felt my anger rising. I stood my ground and told him that if he wanted my professional services, he would need to pay for them like any other client. I also said that if he continued to threaten and manipulate me, I wouldn't work with him at all, regardless of the price. I explained that my business wasn't just a hobby, it was how I made my living, paid my employees, and supported myself. Working for free on such a large event would be detrimental to my business and unfair to my paying clients. He hung up on me, and I felt that was the end of it. However, the next day, I started receiving calls and messages from various family members, including our parents, aunts, and uncles. They were all pressuring me to help Alex with his wedding for free or at a very low cost. Some of them even accused me of being jealous of Alex's happiness and trying to ruin his special day. I tried to explain my side of the story, but most of them wouldn't listen. They kept saying that family should come first and that I should be willing to make sacrifices for my brother's happiness. Even my parents, who had always been supportive of my business, were now telling me that I was being unreasonable. They said that this could be a chance to mend my relationship with Alex and that I should take it, regardless of the cost to my business. The situation has become so stressful that it's starting to affect my work and personal life. I'm finding it hard to concentrate on my other clients' weddings, and I'm constantly anxious about running into family members who might bring up the issue. I've even started avoiding family gatherings to escape the constant pressure and criticism. Part of me feels guilty for not helping Alex, especially since this could have been an opportunity to mend our relationship. But another part of me feels angry and hurt that he only reached out when he needed something from me and that he's now turned the whole family against me once again. I can't help but feel that if I give in, I'll be setting a precedent that it's okay for him to treat me poorly and still expect my help whenever he needs it. I'm torn about what to do. 
Should I give in to the family pressure and plan Alex's wedding for free or at a very low cost? Or should I stand my ground and risk further damaging my relationships with my family members? I feel like I'm being painted as the villain in this situation. But I don't think it's fair to expect me to work for free just because we're related. Am I wrong for wanting to be compensated fairly for my work, even when it's for family? Ida for refusing to plan my estranged brother's wedding for free after he reached out to me after years of not speaking. Update 1, it's been about three weeks since my last post, and a lot has happened. I want to thank everyone who took the time to read my story and offer advice. Your support really helped me gain perspective on the situation. After much consideration, I decided to stand my ground. I realized that giving in to Alex's demands would not only be unfair to me and my business, but would also set a dangerous precedent for future family events. It was a difficult decision, knowing it might further strain my family relationships, but I felt it was necessary for my own well-being and the integrity of my business. So I sat down with my parents and had a long, honest conversation with them. This wasn't easy, as our family has always had a tendency to avoid confrontation and sweep issues under the rug, but I felt it was necessary to clear the air. I explained in detail how Alex had treated me over the years, including the incident with Sarah that led to our estrangement, and I showed them old text messages and emails where I had tried to reach out to Alex and been ignored or rebuffed. I also broke down the financial implications of planning a wedding of that scale for free or at a significantly reduced cost. I showed them my business records, explaining how much time and resources go into planning a destination wedding for 300 people. I pointed out that doing this for free would mean potentially having to lay off staff or turn down other paying clients. To my surprise, my parents listened more attentively than I expected. They seemed to understand my position better after our talk. My mom admitted that they had been so focused on trying to reunite the family that they hadn't fully considered the impact on me and my business. My dad, who has always been more business-minded, said he hadn't realized the scale of what Alex was asking for. After our discussion, my parents suggested a family meeting to clear the air and resolve the issue. Initially, I was hesitant, fearing it might turn into an ambush against me. The memory of how the family had turned against me during the Sarah incident was still fresh in my mind. However, they assured me that they would moderate the discussion and ensure everyone had a chance to speak. They also promised to back me up if things got out of hand. The family meeting took place last weekend at our parents' house. Alex, Emma, our parents, and I were all present. The atmosphere was tense when we all sat down in the living room. I could feel Alex's glare and Emma's curious gaze. Wigger. Our parents looked nervous but determined. I started by explaining my side of the story, including how hurt I was when Alex cut me off years ago and how it felt to have him reach out only when he needed something. I detailed the work involved in planning a wedding for 300 people in Hawaii and why I couldn't do it for free. I also expressed my frustration at how quickly the family had turned against me without hearing my side of the story. To my surprise, Emma spoke up next. She revealed that she had no idea about the full extent of Alex's and my estrangement. She thought we were just not very close. Not that we hadn't spoken in years. She also didn't know that Alex had asked me to do the wedding for free. She apologized for the misunderstanding and said she never intended to take advantage of my services. Emma's words seemed to have an impact on Alex. He looked uncomfortable and avoided eye contact with everyone in the room. After a moment of tense silence, he finally spoke up. What Alex said next shocked everyone in the room. He admitted the real reason behind our estrangement. It turned out that Sarah had indeed been flirting with our cousin Mike at the barbecue all those years ago. When I told Alex about it, he confronted Sarah, who then spun a web of lies to cover her tracks. She convinced Alex that I was jealous of their relationship and was trying to break them up. Alex confessed that he chose to believe Sarah over me because he was infatuated with her at the time. He acknowledged that it was a mistake and that he should have trusted his sister. He explained that even after he found out about Sarah's cheating and they broke up, he was too embarrassed and ashamed to reach out to me and admit he was wrong. So the revelation stunned me. All these years, I had thought Alex had simply chosen to believe his girlfriend over me. I hadn't realized the depth of manipulation involved. It didn't excuse his behavior, but it did help me understand it better. As for the wedding planning, Alex admitted that he had grossly underestimated the cost and effort involved in planning a wedding. He said he had assumed that since I owned a wedding planning business, it wouldn't be a big bass me to do it for free. He now realized how unfair and unrealistic that expectation was. Our parents were visibly shocked by these revelations. They admitted that they had not fully understood the situation and apologized for pressuring me without knowing all the facts. They also expressed disappointment in Alex for his past behavior and for not being honest with them about the root of our estrangement. The meeting ended with Alex offering a heartfelt apology for his behavior over the years and for trying to manipulate me into planning his wedding for free. He said he understood if I didn't want to be involved in the wedding planning at all, given our history. I was touched by his apology and the truth finally coming out. While I'm not ready to forgive and forget everything immediately, I told Alex that I was willing to work on rebuilding our relationship. As a gesture of goodwill, I offered to provide consultation for their wedding planning at a discounted family rate, 
but made it clear that if they wanted my company to fully plan and execute the wedding, they would need to pay the standard rate minus a reasonable family discount. Alex and Emma agreed to my terms and were now in the process of discussing the details. Our parents were relieved to see us starting to mend our relationship and supported my decision regarding the wedding planning services. After the meeting, I had a private conversation with Alex. We talked about the years we had lost and how we could move forward. He expressed regret for believing Sarah over me and for cutting me out of his life. I shared how hurt I had been and how it had affected me over the years. It was a difficult conversation, but it felt like a necessary step in rebuilding our relationship. This experience has been emotionally draining, but I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. It's going to take time to fully repair the damage done to our relationship, but I'm cautiously optimistic about the future. We've agreed to start small, perhaps with weekly phone calls or monthly dinners, to gradually rebuild our bond. As for the wedding planning, Alex and Emma have decided to scale back their plans significantly. They realize that a 300-person destination wedding in Hawaii was beyond their budget and not really what they wanted. We're now looking at local venues for a more intimate ceremony. I'm still processing everything that has happened. While I'm glad the truth finally came out, it's hard not to think about all the years we lost. I'm trying to focus on the future and the possibility of having my brother back in my life, but I know it won't be easy. This situation has also made me realize the importance of clear communication in both personal and professional relationships. I'm considering creating a formal policy for my business regarding services for family members to avoid similar situations in the future. For now, I'm taking things one day at a time. I'm grateful for the support I've received from this community and for finally having my side of the story heard by my family. It's a start, and that's more than I had a month ago. Update 2, it's been about two months since my last update, and I wanted to share some developments in the situation with Alex's wedding and her relationship. After our family meeting, Alex and Emma decided to scale back their wedding plan significantly. They realized that a 300-person wedding in Hawaii was not only beyond their budget, but also not what they truly wanted. They opted for a more intimate ceremony with about 100 guests at a local vineyard, which made the planning process much more manageable. True to my word, I provided consultation services at a discounted rate. I helped them create a realistic budget, suggested vendors within their price range, and gave them a timeline to follow. However, they decided to do most of the actual planning themselves, which I think was a good decision for everyone involved. It allowed them to take ownership of their special day while still benefiting from my expertise when needed. Working together on the wedding, even in this limited capacity, has given Alex and me an opportunity to reconnect. We've been having regular conversations, not just about the wedding, but about our lives in general. It's been nice to catch up on the years we missed, though there's still some awkwardness at times. We've started having dinner together once a week, usually with Emma join us. These dinners have been a mix of wedding planning and just catching up. It's been interesting to get to know Emma better and to see how she and Alex interact. She seems to be a positive influence on him, encouraging open communication and often acting as a mediator when Alex and I have disagreements. Alex has made efforts to make amends. He's been more understanding of my business and has even referred a couple of friends to my company for their wedding planning needs. This gesture meant a lot to me, as it showed he respects my work and wants to support my business. We've also started talking about the past more openly. Alex has shared more details about his relationship with Sarah and how it affected him. He admitted that her manipulation went deeper than just the incident at the barbecue. She had been slowly isolating him from friends and family throughout their relationship. Learning this has helped me understand his past behavior better, though it doesn't excuse it entirely. However, not everything has been smooth sailing. Some family members still think I should be doing more for Alex's wedding. A few aunts and uncles have made comments about how I should let bygones be bygones and offer to do everything for free. It's been frustrating, but I'm standing firm in my decision. Alex, to his credit, has been backing me up when these comments arise, explaining to the family that we've come to an agreement we're both happy with. Emma has been a surprising ally in this situation. She's been very supportive of my position and has even defended me to some of the more pushy relatives. Her support has made navigating family gatherings much easier. She's also been encouraging Alex to open up more and work on our relationship, which I appreciate. On a personal note, this whole experience has made me reflect on my own business practices. I've decided to create a clear policy for family and close friends who request my services. This policy outlines the discounts I'm willing to offer and the expectations for both parties. I hope this will help prevent similar misunderstandings in the future. While things are improving with Alex, I'm still cautious. Years of estrangement can't be erased in a few months. We're taking things slow and trying to rebuild trust gradually. There have been moments of tension, like when we disagreed about some wedding details, but we're learning to communicate better and work through these issues. I've also been working on setting boundaries. While I'm happy to be rebuilding my relationship with Alex, I'm making sure not to neglect my own needs and feelings in the process. I'm learning that it's okay to say no sometimes and that doing so doesn't mean I don't care about him. Alex and Emma's wedding is set for next month. 
I'm looking forward to attending as a guest and a sister, not as the wedding planner. It feels good to be able to just enjoy the celebration without the stress of managing every detail. This experience has been a roller coaster, but I feel like I've grown both personally and professionally from it. I'm proud of myself for standing my ground and not compromising my business principles while still finding a way to mend family relationships. It's not perfect, but it's progress. And for now, that's enough. Update 3, it's been about six months since Alex and Emma's wedding, and I wanted to provide a final update on how things have unfolded. The wedding itself was a beautiful, intimate affair at the local vineyard we had chosen. As planned, I attended as a guest and Alex's sister, not as the wedding planner. It was refreshing to be able to relax and enjoy the celebration without worrying about all the behind-the-scenes details. But Alex and Emma seemed truly happy, and it was heartwarming to see them start their new life together. During the reception, Alex surprised me by giving a speech where he publicly acknowledged our past issues and thanked me for my help and support, despite our previous estrangement. He expressed regret for the years we lost and hoped for a better relationship moving forward. I was touched by his words and the effort he made to mend our relationship in front of our family and friends. Since the wedding, Alex and I have been working on rebuilding our sibling bond. We've maintained our weekly dinner tradition, sometimes with Emma, sometimes just the two of us. These dinners have given us a chance to really talk and get to know each other again as adults. So we've shared stories from the years we were apart, discussed our current lives, and even started making plans for family holidays together. So one particularly meaningful moment came when Alex asked for my advice on a work-related issue. It was a small gesture, but it showed that he values my opinion and sees me as someone he can turn to for support. These little steps have gone a long way in healing our relationship. We've also started reviving some of our old traditions. Last month, we went on a hiking trip together, something we used to do often as teenagers. It was a bit awkward at first, but by the end of the day, it felt like old times. We're planning to make it a regular thing, maybe inviting Emma and some of our cousins to join us next time. As for my business, the clear policy I created for family and friends has been a game changer. It's helped set clear expectations and has actually led to more family members respecting my work and the value I provide. I've even had a few cousins book my services for their events, paying the family rate without any drama or expectations of free work. Emma and I have developed a friendship of our own. She's been incredibly supportive of my relationship with Alex and has even become a bit of a buffer when family members start to overstep. Her presence in our family has been a positive influence overall. While things aren't perfect and we still have moments of awkwardness or disagreement, I feel like Alex and I are in a much better place now. We're both making efforts to understand each other better and to be part of each other's lives in a meaningful way. This whole experience has taught me a lot about the importance of clear communication, standing up for myself, and the possibility of second chances in relationships. It hasn't been an easy journey, but I'm grateful for where it has led us. As I close this chapter, I'm cautiously optimistic about the future of my relationship with Alex and our family dynamics. We're not the same close-knit siblings we were as children, and we probably never will be. But we're forging a new, adult relationship that feels genuine and respectful. And for now, that's enough.